In this video we're going to look at 2022 paper 1 question 7. It's mainly algebra and differentiation. We're told that Hannah is exercising and a function that describes her heart rate is this cubic function. So her heart rate is obviously going to increase and then it's going to decrease and then it's going to increase as she exercises. We're told that x is in minutes and we're asked to work out what Hannah's heart rate is after 4 minutes. So obviously you just sub in x equals 4, you plug it into your calculator, and your answer is 162 beats per minute. Again, do not forget to put in your units. That's the type of unit that some students might neglect and forget to put it in. Okay, so I have part B and part C here. In part B, you're simply asked to get the first derivative. So if h x is this, the first derivative is 6x squared minus 57x plus 105. In part C, we're asked to get the derivative when x equals 2. So you just sub in a 2 instead of an x and you get 15. And then we're asked to explain what that means in the context of the question. Remember that h of x represents the beats per minute of Hannah's heart. And remember that the first derivative is the rate of change of the original thing. So h dash x represents the rate of change of Hannah's heart, of Hannah's heart rate. In other words, how quickly is her heart rate increasing? At what rate is her heart rate increasing or decreasing? And based on the fact that h dash of 2 is equal to 15, we can say that after 2 minutes of exercising, the rate at which Hannah's heart rate is increasing is 15 beats per minute. In other words, that's the rate. It's, we're not saying that her heart is beating only 15 times per minute. We're saying that that's the rate at which her heart rate is increasing. The wording is very confusing here because we've got the rate of change in terms of the derivative and then the heart rate. And it, it, it took me a while to try and get the English right there. It's hard to, to, to specify it fully, but that's what you need to get right in order to get the full marks here. In part D, we're asked to use calculus and to look at our graph in order to identify the minimum value for h of x and the maximum value for h of x. Now in order to identify the minimum, we should look at our graph. You can clearly see the lowest point is at the very beginning, when, h, when x is equal to 0. So h of x is this function, and we can clearly see that in, within the range from 0 to 8, the minimum value is at the very, very beginning. So you just sub in x equals 0. And when you sub in x equals 0, everything cancels out except for the constant at the end. So the minimum possible value is 70 beats per minute. Now in order to get the maximum, we need to find the maximum turning point. So just think about differentiation now. In order to find that maximum value, the first thing we do is we get our first derivative. h dash x is 6x squared minus 57x plus 105. In order to identify the turning point, you need to let the first derivative, which represents the slope, equal to 0. So if I let the slope equal to 0, I get 6x squared minus 56x plus 105 equals 0. And at this stage, we can simply divide everything by 3. If you divide everything by 3, you get 2x squared minus 19x plus 35. You factorize and solve your quadratic, and x works out as 5 over 2, or x works out as 7. So that tells me that a turning point exists when x is 7, and a turning point exists when x is 2.5. You can clearly see from your diagram that the lower value for x represents the maximum, while the x equals 7 represents the minimum. So to find the maximum possible value, I'm going to sub in x equals 5 over 2. That will give me the corresponding h of x value when x is 2.5. So when you sub in x as 5 over 2 into the original h of x function, you end up with h of 5 over 2 works out as 185.625 beats per minute. So the minimum heart rate was 70, the maximum heart rate is this. Now for part E, the maths is very simple, but the logic behind it is, is a little bit trickier. We want to work out how long after she starts exercising is her heart rate decreasing most quickly. So h of x represents the, the, her heart rate. It represents it's nothing to do with the rate of change of her heart rate, but that's just her heart rate. When I get the first derivative, this represents the rate at which her heart rate is changing. And if I sum in different values for x, I'll find out that sometimes her heart rate is not really changing very rapidly, but other times it's, it is changing very, very rapidly. So look at h dash x. Think about what this is. It's a plus x squared, so it's a u-shaped curve. And that curve represents the rate of change of her heart, of the, her, the beats per minute. I want to know when is this 
changing the most rapidly? When is it decreasing the most? In other words, I need to find the turning point of the slope. I want to find when is the slope increasing most rapidly. So you can kind of, you should ignore your h of x. There's nothing to do with it. This is the function we're concerned with. And I want to work out the minimum value of the slope. When is the, when is the rate of change? When is it at its minimum? When is it de decreasing the most? I want to find the most extreme value of the slope. In other words, it's just like getting a turning point for a quadratic. In order to get a turning point, you differentiate. So now I get the second derivative of the original thing. And to get the turning point, you let it equal to zero. So the derivative of the slope is 12x minus 57. I let that equal to zero. And it's very simple. You end up working out that x is equal to 4.75 minutes. In other words, after 4.75 minutes, that's when I, I reach the most extreme value for the slope. Or when the slope is decreasing at its most, rap most rapidly. And it asks me to leave it in minutes and seconds. And obviously, 0.75 minutes is three quarters of a minute, which is 45 seconds. Or you, if you prefer, you could take 0.75 and multiply it by 60, and it'll give you 45 seconds. In F part I, we're told that Bruno's heart rate is always 15 beats per minute more than Hannah's heart rate. So we have a rough sketch of H of X from the previous page. And so if this was our H of X, then B of X, Bruno's heart rate is simply, it's basically the same, it's just higher. But the key is the rate of change is the same. If H of X is 2X cubed minus 28.5X squared plus 105X plus 70, then Bruno, B of X for Bruno, instead of 70, it's simply 85. It's just, his is just 15 beats per minute higher than Hannah's at all times. But the first derivative will remain the exact same. Because if you think about our curves, like if this top, top one is B of X and the bottom one is H of X, the rate of change is the same. They change at the exact same rate. They both peak at the same time and they trough and they get their minimum at the same time. So the rate of change of H of X and B of X is exactly the same. So B of X is actually equal to H dash X. So you should realize here, it asked you to write B dash X in terms of H dash X. So you should just say that they're equal to each other. That's all you need to write down to get the marks in this part. In part II, we're told that Karen's heart rate is always 10% less than Hannah's heart rate. If it's 10% less, then obviously that means it's 90% of Hannah's heart rate. So Karen's heart rate is always 90% of what Hannah's is. So if H of X was this, to work out K of X, you would just multiply by 0 0.9 to represent 90%. Same thing applies for the first derivative. It's just 0 0.9 of h, of, of h dash x. So if I want to work out the rate of change of Karen's heart rate, it's simply 90% of Hannah's. Whatever Hannah's heart rate is, Karen's is 90% of that. And the same goes for the rate of change. It's just 90% of whatever Hannah's is. So this is all you need to get the marks for part two. In part G, we're told that Martha's heart rate is calculated, it's simply h of 0 0.8 times x. And we've been working with h of x all along, so instead of an x, we simply sub in 0 0.8 times x. So h, if we're subbing in 0 0.8 times x, we just get 0 0.8 times x to be cubed, and a 0 0.8 times x to be squared, and a 0 0.8 times x. To get our final answer, you just you plug it into your calculator, 2 times 0 0.8 to be cubed, is 1.024 x cubed, and that's our first term. Here you plug in minus 28.5 times 0 0.8 squared, and you get this value. 105 times 0 0.8 gives me 84, so that's our final answer, m of x, for part g here.